If you've got a job as a performance analyst in a hedge fund or an asset management company, then you're clearly going to be familiar with the terms benchmarks. What are benchmarks? Let's understand the concept. How do we measure performance? Some of the equity indices like S&P 500 and finally the bond indices. A pooling of funds concept. Let's revisit that. Investors pool in the capital into an asset management company. The asset management company headed by the fund manager makes investments into multiple assets. The multiple assets generate returns which are given back to the asset management company. The asset management company consolidates these returns and gives it by way of dividends to the investors. This is the most common concept of pooling of funds. So this circular flow of capital returns, returns and capital happens all the time in this concept of pooling of funds unless the investor actually takes out the returns. A pooled fund, therefore, could be either a hedge fund, a mutual fund, an ETF that's an exchange traded fund or a pension fund. All of these are examples of pooled funds where capital from multiple investors is pooled into an investment pool and then the investment pool makes investments into different uh, asset classes like equities, commodities, bonds, etc. The investors have a choice. And what is that choice? The choice is they could choose to directly invest in assets, right? Or they could invest it into the pool funds. As I already mentioned, the pool funds could be hedge fund, it could be a mutual fund, it could also be a pension plan, etc. So the investor is thinking, what should they do? They have two choices, direct investing versus pooled funds. What should they choose? Who is better? Am I better? Remember, when you're talking of hedge funds, the investors are extremely savvy investors, right? They're putting in capital of almost a million dollars plus into the hedge funds. And therefore, their choice is between who is the smarter guy, the direct investment or the pooled investment. Who is, which is a smarter investment? Making a direct investment into the asset classes or putting it into a pool and appointing a fund manager who will, who's expected therefore to do a better job. The investors are measuring the performance between the pool funds versus the benchmark. Okay, so this is where benchmarks come into the picture. Benchmarks help measure the performance of the fund manager or the pooled funds and therefore benchmarks play a very important role in capital markets and in pooled funds kind of investing because the investor is always going to measure the performance of the benchmark versus the performance of the pooled fund. As the investors take out their magnifying glass and study the performance, they're going to look at the benchmark versus the pooled funds. Now, what is a benchmark? A benchmark is an unmanaged set of assets which are relevant to the underlying pool. Okay, you can't have an equity fund and then keep a benchmark as a bond index. Okay, the benchmark therefore is unmanaged. What do we mean by unmanaged? By unmanaged, it means that there is no entity that is responsible or does the calculation of managing the benchmark. The, manage, the benchmark is a statistical computation that comes across by various rating agencies or financial institutions that create, generate and use the benchmark in performance management. Whereas a pooled fund is managed. So therefore, a pooled fund is expected to give better returns than the benchmark because you're paying that management fee, right? It's in the case you're going to directly invest in the benchmark, there's no management fee to be paid. But if you're going to invest in the pool funds, you have to pay a management fee. So therefore, investors watch and track the benchmark performance very closely with a magnifying glass at regular intervals. And hence, performance analysts have become a big job and a very important resource in many of the hedge funds and private equity firms. Let's take an example of a benchmark for those of us who are still unfamiliar with the term. Remember this? This logo reminds us of the recently conducted World Cup football in 2022 and the battle between the two titans of Argentina and France. At halftime, Argentina was leading the game at two and France had not yet opened their books. In the French captain's mind, therefore, the benchmark now is to get more than two. It's as simple as that. In India, we love to watch cricket matches. We know that 
the cricket score, the wickets taken, the runs had are the benchmarks. So it's not an absolute scoring and therefore benchmarks are a relative method of scoring. Benchmarks could be depending upon equities, fixed income or commodities and every one of them have their own unique benchmarks. The equity benchmarks could be of different types generated, created and shared by different agencies. These equity benchmarks could be global indices, regional indices, thematic indices or even sectoral indices. The oldest benchmark that's been used in the world, especially for investors investing in the United States market, is the DJIA or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This index measures the performance of 30 stocks listed and traded in the US stock markets. It's a price weighted index. A price weighted index is one in which higher the price, greater the weightage. Whereas in India, on the Nifty 50 is a volume weighted index, where greater the volume, greater the weights. S&P 500 is perhaps the most widely used uh, benchmark in all equity pooled funds across the world. S&P standing for Standard & Poor's 500 is the most widely used equity benchmark. It comprises 500 publicly traded diverse large cap US stocks. So compared to the DJIA, it's more diverse, it's more broad based. It's got a lot more representation because DJIA has only 30 stocks, but S&P 500 has got 500 stocks. These stocks are across different sectors. It's a market capitalization weighted index, and therefore it is the most preferred benchmark across the world. MSCI, that's the Morgan Stanley index, is used largely by global investors. Okay, Global investors are those investors who invest anywhere in the world. All right. Unlike DJIA and S&P 500, which is largely used by US-based asset management companies, MSCI index is more driven towards being used by global investors because they compare the global performance of asset classes. The different kinds of indices announced by the MSCI regularly, from which you can, you can get it from the website, is MSCI World Index, MSCI Emerging Markets Index, MSCI India Index as well, and there could be many, many more about such kind of indices given by MSCI. Fixed income benchmarks that are often used by the world asset management companies for performance analysis include Bloomberg Barclays US Aggregate Bond Index, JP Morgan Emerging Markets Bond Index, or Refinitiv, which is the part of the uh, LSEG that is the London Stock Exchange Group, comprising the largest, the largest uh, index in the European region is FTSE, which comprises, gives, announces the World Global Bond Index. That's Refinitiv, which is the agency that does it. It's a part of LSEG, that's the London Stock Exchange Group. Commodity index could be Bloomberg Commodity Index, Agricultural Metals, Energy, Precious Metals, etc. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Keep learning, keep growing. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. Stay tuned for more such videos.